Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the CWR Clash of Randoms podcast with your host, the JKD, with my co host, D O C L O V E M C M I K E. Is there anything you want to say before? Nope. All right, man. I know it's been a long time, long time, but before we get started, please make sure to leave a like, smash the like button, comment, share this video. Anything else? Nope. Okay. Well, I'll be a good little boy today. Uh, hey, smash the like button. Can you leave a comment? Oh, man. Sure. Let's go and talk about TLC. Now, I consider this, of all the events, you know, pay-per-views, takeovers, and special events, and you might be wondering what type of special events that we had. Uh, stuff like NXT had, like the Great American Bash or the Super Tuesday stuff. How they doing st- uh, Starcade this year? No. That's, that, that was a long time ago anyway. Uh, oh, okay. But TLC got to be the best, my best one this whole year. The last review, this had to be my best one predicting everything. And the reason why I say it's the best one, because even though at War Games, which I'll address the War Games situation, uh, there's a lot of things I predicted that was going to even happen within the matches. Uh, so, yeah, I was surprised by that one. Uh, also, with uh, also, as I said, War Games earlier. So I know you guys might be wondering where's War Games, what's the War Games review, and so I did. Well, see, so we recorded the episode the day, the day after uh, Takeover, and then all of a sudden the video got deleted, and so we had to redo the video all over again, and it all of a sudden like we just you missed it, you missed it already, you missed it already. Well, yeah, right now we're watching, we're watching TLC as we're talking about this, too. Yeah. My dad just missed the spot again. Again, yeah. He missed the spot John again. John Morrison hit him with the chair. Oh, bro, he missed the cha- uh, spot. Uh, but we're going to be talking about this in a few minutes. Uh, but like I said, you know, leave a comment, share, uh, smash the like button, share the video, do all that. Let's go ahead and get the TLC. Now, uh, all right. Let's go ahead, go ahead to the, uh, the kickoff show. Now, it was an eight-man tag match representing SmackDown. As we got the baby faces, the uh, Daniel Bryan, Biggie, Otis, and Chad Gable taking on the uh, uh, heels of the group. Uh, pretty much Baron Corbin, well King Corbin, put some respect. Intercontinental Champion Sami Zayn, Shinsuke, and Cesaro. Now this was actually a surprisingly good eight man tag. Yeah, match. actually, I didn't expect it to be this good. It was really good. Man. Uh, obviously, was going back and forth. Otis being taught once again by Chad Gable from the uh, you know, School of Alpha, you know, Alpha Academy, you know, once again. Uh. But, however, obviously at the end, and like I said, predicted that Big E was going to be the one to take the win for the group, let alone pinning Sami Zayn, which now is for the Intercontinental Champion. On SmackDown, Big E will get his shot at the title. And I give that match a B. Yeah, that was kind of like a B. I think it it was actually a really good eight-man match. It wasn't a cluster. It wasn't people flying and flipping all around everywhere. Mm. It was just a good match, you know, good clean match. Okay. Now, next, uh, uh, the first match of the match card, which is the match we're currently seeing. The main right card, now. yep. Yep, uh, this is the match we're currently watching right now. Drew McIntyre versus AJ Styles for the WWE Champion in a TLC matchup. Now, as you can see so far right now from the match we're looking at, you know, Miz already got dropped through the table. Yeah, almost gone. Almost got him. You know, McIntyre leg hurting. I mean, you know, suffering, uh, you know, good selling by him. You know, as AJ Styles, they're both battling up there. But this was a really good matchup, though. Oh. Uh, you know, you think like TLC match is gonna be nothing but a cluster match, or like it's gonna be kind of sloppy a little bit. Or at least now it will be. But, but you're dealing with two pros here, man. You're dealing with AJ Styles and McIntyre, so I mean they are really, really good workers. Yeah, McIntyre, the champion. You know, said he wanted this match against AJ Styles since he was 16 years old. You know, uh, obviously, uh, another match I predicted correctly. You know, Drew McIntyre come as the victor. Uh, I also did say that at TLC, uh, the Miz was going to cash in, whether it was going to be before. Nah, this is a very dumb cash in. I did say, I did say the Miz was going to cash in before, whether it's before, in the middle, or at the end of the match. I said, I did say the Miz was going to cash in. Because usually, men don't really keep their briefcases. They never had a man keep his briefcase like the next year. Like, the last person who's ever done that was uh, Seth Rollins. And that was like five years ago, so like, uh, obviously, I knew Miz was going to win it because I even said he was going to win the title. 
So, I mean, I feel like Miz was going to cash in, but I didn't think he was going to cash in in the middle of the, you know, in the match. I thought he was going to cash in at the end. I think, I, I mean, for those, I know a lot of people, were, I know for all the people who were screaming for the Miz to just climb up the ladder, you know, uh, and it's quite disappointing, you know, obviously. Uh, for those who are fans of the Miz, you know, I, I know it's quite disappointing. I bet the angry uh, Miz girl pretty happy the fact she didn't, the fact he didn't win it, so. Well, at the end, McIntyre did get the victory, and I was happy to see that. Yeah, with uh, AJ Styles crashing and burning outside of the ring, and with yeah. um, McIntyre hitting. That was a hard bump, though, for Right, me. yeah. And with McIntyre hitting uh, Miz with the Claymore kick and then climbing the ladder. Yeah. Wait, but yeah. I feel like Miz wasn't going to win anyway. I knew he was going to be a Money in the Bank winner that wasn't going to uh, get the cash in and win anyway, so. But let's just say, man, congratulations to the men to making history by being the first man to ever do both successfully cash in and fail to win the champion. So, I mean, look at it hard for Can you imagine what was going through AJ's head just like take that little spot, you know? Yeah, he got cut on the side of his face or something, didn't he? Uh, I don't know, but, man, just imagine. But let's go ahead and move on to the next matchup. This is an A. Let's go ahead and move on to the next matchup, which was a SmackDown Women's Champion match, which actually I consider was a very – it was like a, I know most people consider this a sleeper match considering that this match happened before, a week before uh, the pay-per-view. But Sasha Banks, Carmelo, for the SmackDown Women's Champion, this match was pretty good. The fact they actually uh, showcased Carmelo a lot more. I think Carmelo is actually a lot better than what she was before. I think she was. Uh, uh, she, she surprised me. Uh, she, uh, she always been okay, uh, but she's a little bit better than okay. Now I still don't think she's great. I like the uh that she has a little sidekick rolling with her, and that makes her character a little better. The Somalia, uh, Reginald. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Reginald. Reginald taking a bit, but uh, his credibility is if he ever want to be a wrestling wrestler, his credibility is gone. As you see right here for uh Carmel Sasha, man. there you go, man. Yeah, cause he, I like he I like the spot. Getting, he stays getting smacked down. Nice uh, dress guy though. Nice dress. Yeah, I got a lot, but man, I got a lot. He Carmel had some points where like she was gonna actually win the matchup, you know. Uh, I was really surprised. Did you like her ring attire tonight? Oh uh, well, I mean, I, apparently with the naked looking briefs. I I don't know, but I'm, you know the natural color briefs. I, no, I'm you know serious, trying to be serious. I I don't I like oh he's my Sasha Bank. Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant Carmelo. I was about to say, eh. uh, I was not a big fan of, like those type of stuff outfits, but you know, hey, Carmelo stuff the, be looking ugly. Nah, I like but, her better when she with her old gear. But either way, in the end, Sasha Banks did get the victory, and I actually give this match an A. Carmelo surprised me on this one. I uh, wouldn't say an A, but I would I, give, I give it a it B minus. Uh, as you see right now, you see Billy Kay trying to dress Oscar for her upcoming matchup for the women's tag team title match, which we'll be talking about later on. As we move on to the next match, which is the match you know you want to talk about, I know you mainly want to talk uh, about this one. You know, no, the, the, next, the next match, we're all tag team title match. Oh, you know what I was thinking about? <laughs> you know what I was actually thinking about? I was thinking about uh, Charlotte. I mean, oh. Dang. Oh, my God. Dang, bro. Come oh, man, on, man. I got, I got to hear it myself. I think about Oscar, Oscar and uh, her, uh, Mr. Tag Team Partner, hey. which was not Charlotte Flair. For the Raw Tag Team Title match, <laughs> we got the Hurt Business taking on Kofi and Xavier Wood of the New Day. And I, well, I can't even say other oh, New Day because I think he's no longer here. But Cedric Alexander jumped his butt out there fast and got his butt whooped fast. Hey. I mean, they were all over uh, Cedric Alexander. Now, don't forget me. No, no, no. It's not Cedric Alexander no longer. It's Prime Alexander. Because remember, for those who actually watch WWE's uh, Instagram pages like that, you might know that Cedric Alexander yeah, he took did over. Come, so, yeah. He uh, took over the Instagram page from yesterday and today, and he called himself Prime Alexander. And, you know, he's been making quick talk about saying, like, man, he's been working out, man, doing his thing, saying who should he pin tonight? Who, how should he win? Pin false submissions so like that. You know, I said he should pin Kofi. Cause it, you know, it actually means something if he pin a former world champion, like a man who's won so much. I mean, look at this spot right here. Look at this. Look, man, look at the skills by Kofi, though, man. I was, yeah, Kofi, get out I was, of it, look, it looked botched, obviously, but, like, man. It wasn't botched, but Look at though. this. Look at this. It oh, look one. at the stomp, man. Man, it came out of nowhere. I thought, he, I thought he had him on the SOS, though. Nah, man. That's such a guy. That's Prime Alexander, man. Put some respect on the man. But he got primely whooped at the beginning of the match. But, man. That dude tells him. <laughs> this, look, 
You know, these men had so many tag team matches. Like, but prior, you'll never get tired of watching them, though. Because, like, these two, like, these two tag teams, like, they're so great. You right. know, a lot of people have been saying, show him Benjamin, man. Like, they, he need to get pushed a lot more. And, like, obviously, he was in the, he's always been in the backstage and stuff that doing nothing. Here he is right now with the Hurt Business. You know, and then Cedric's the same way. You know, he was that pretty much the uh, the type of guy that you hate to see when it comes to a black wrestler, you know, smiling black guy, as you say. Yeah. You know, you really don't That's like That's what he much. was, yo. And, you know, and he said that. He even said it himself. You know, now, you know, man, he wasn't going to get him nowhere, you know? So, uh, obviously, that's the reason why Cedric moved to uh, her business. And, obviously, but, I mean, sometimes it can't get you over. As you see, the New Day, man, 10 tie tag team champions, longest running tag team champions WWE, 483 days. So, I mean, it could have got you something, I mean, a nice combo. But you got to think about it. It's just something special about, I will say this about New It's just something special about those guys where they just caught the whole world's imagination. Yeah. It's just something about those guys. Some folks got that it factor where you don't know. Somebody can do the same thing they doing. And it's like, man, look at these jerks out here. But it's just something that's, that's in them that make you be like, man, these guys, funny as I don't know what. Ooh. These guys got I don't know how much talent, you know. Like, when you look at the Hurt Business, I think 2020 really goes out to the Hurt Business, man. I mean, to be honest. I mean, you got to talk about, man, these are guys who really wasn't doing much. I mean, look at Bobby Lash. I mean, just like I said about. Yeah, Bobby Lash was yeah. pretty much dead. I mean, just look what I just said about Sheldon and Cedric. You know, they were just sitting in the backstage being a smiling black. Well, for this, like, Sheldon Ben, who's just in the background. You know, no, Cedric. Cedric, you know, he gave him that game where they were asking him questions. He'd be looking crazy. And, yeah, and I'm like, what, <laughs> like, where was he going? Like, where, where were they going with it? Like, for the, And then you had Cedric being a smiling black guy, you know, hanging around Apollo Crews and Ricochet and Ali that wasn't going to get him nowhere. And then Bobby, he was kind of falling over these stupid storylines, you know. Yeah, but, with Russo and, and stuff like that. Yeah, and Lana. So like, and that wasn't going to get him nowhere. And, and here comes MVP making his return back. As you see right there, man, that beautiful – what, what, butterfly suplex? I butterfly throw, yeah. Yeah, uh, and then, what do you think about this part right here, man? Cedric, you know, and I said, and I said Cedric gonna tag in and get the win. You know, what you, how did you feel about Cedric getting the tag I in? I think, I think it was, a, uh, it's good for his character. It, it marks his independence, uh, and it marks how, look at that, Ooh. eventually by next year, I say mid next year, the, uh, her is gonna turn on him. Uh, I don't know, man. Man, look, I ain't gonna lie. Right, look, Cedric needs to hurt business, man. Cedric really needs to hurt uh, business. He, he, he gonna, they gonna, they gonna take him apart. They, they gonna break him up. You know how they, they can't, they can't. Look, if they want to make money, bro. They need to hurt business. Yeah, they need to hurt. If they want to make money, I, bro. I, I tell you one thing though. One thing, one person who can learn a lesson from Cedric Alexander, yeah. his wife, because oh my God, she see. has no wrestling skills. Well, apparently so. I mean, but I mean, I'm pretty sure she got the win this as we're going to Dynamite, so. Yeah, but, man, look how sloppy all her matches are. Now I'll change the fact that she got the win at Dynamite, though. But over Dia Montana, oh, man. Oh, man, but, you know, obviously, man. And I like the way they dress because they're like a black four horsemen. You talking about the Hurt Business? Yeah. Right? Man, I mean, looking clean, man. Looking like they came from Black Panther. Like, they came with, man. Uh, Wakanda, baby. Kid, man, look like they came from Killmonger, <laughs> man. Killmonger's crew. Look, man, if, man, they make a Black Panther too, man. Brought back Killmonger, man. You know who Killmonger would have got? He would call up the Hurt Business, bro. I'm telling you, man. Look, look, look at that. Skills. Yep. But, man, you know, Hurt Business, they, I'm telling you, they're going to be the future, man. I really believe they, they really, they made Raw relevant, actually, besides Drew they McIntyre. They did. They actually did. Besides Drew McIntyre. You know, they made Raw relevant with the whole United States title picture with Apollo Crews and then the Dirty title picture a little bit with Drew. Huh? I mean, Hurt Business killed it. They killed it on Raw. Hey, I'm looking forward to see what that, what's next for them. That's one of a few bright spots. The only thing I hate they did to her business was like a couple of feuds they were in this year. They had them feuding with a couple of folks for too long. I think, but let's be honest. I mean, do you really do you want to talk about rivalries that happened too long? Do you really no, want to talk about? We don't want to talk about exactly. That. But also, don't forget tonight we'll also be talking about the Slammy Awards also. So we're gonna go ahead and get ready oh, for the that. Sammy. Oh yeah, the Slammy Awards. Uh, <laughs> so so far, her business is taking over all. Holding two of the goals now. As we move on to the next tag team, uh, tag team title match, which someone you know already made claim. Uh, well, let's talk about Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler defending their tag team championships against Oscar and a mystery partner. Which was, well, let's talk about this. I don't even know who it was. I doubt y'all know who it is. But obviously, um. Uh, you know, this all happened because of the fact that Lana got hurt, you know, got, you know, tore, I think, they said MCL, I think, they said, 
But this match led to where Oscar was uh on her own, which most people made rumors about who her tag team partner was gonna be. Uh, a lot of rumors have been saying they're probably gonna be a returning star, like maybe someone like Melina, and you know, a lot of people say Kyrie Sane. Uh, obviously, it was never gonna be Daniel Brooke and Mandy Rose, and there were some other people too. Uh, I, I would have loved to see Kyrie Sane back because I like them together as a tag team. I, you know, a lot of people did wouldn't agree, but like I, I said, I said this person that was gonna be the uh, tag team partner, and I said, I said, man, Charlotte Flair is gonna be the one. I would have said Charlotte for the Royal Rumble, me personally. I I, I knew Charlotte Flair was gonna be the tag team partner, bro. I'm sorry. I, look, I ain't gonna lie, and I really miss Charlotte too, man. Cause like after just seeing Raw without Charlotte, I, it was I, just, I did. I did. I will admit it. I will admit as much. Then again, like I, I didn't bash her like you did. So. I didn't get tired of her, but I don't, I don't mind seeing her back since she's been gone for a while. But I didn't miss her. I did miss her actually, cause I think after seeing Raw and no offense to Oscar, I mean Oscar dominated pretty well, but just seeing like they're not using her correctly. Yeah, and then Sunday with the tag team champions, you know. You know, Raw without Charlotte, man, it was just it was just so weird, you know? I think I, we got tired of well, I I'll to put it this way. And then like there was not and then usually I ain't gonna lie, let's be honest. I'm sorry for interrupting you, but uh-huh, go ahead. really the horsemen were the ones who made each show relevant. Besides twenty eighteen because they had Ronda Rousey. So with like Raw having uh He better got tired of Rousey though. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the perfect. But like, cause like, you know, when have you ever heard, like, think about one big thing Sasha and Bailey did on Raw when Ronda Rousey was there. They absolutely did nothing. Like, they didn't even absolutely did. And then they canceled so much stuff between the two. Right. They supposed had that lesbian angle. Exactly. And so, but, you know, on SmackDown, they had, uh, Becky wasn't doing nothing until she became the man. But you see Charlotte, like, like all around everywhere. But you know something? They, they just ran out this year with Charlotte late last year and this year. Well, it was mostly this year. They had on every show. She was on NXT, SmackDown, Raw. Uh, she got shots at every title. It was like it was a little bit. It was too much. I mean, I mean, she only had a shot for like what two two different titles. No, nah, she three had different three. Titles. Uh, but uh, look, as far as I as far as, I really don't care about Charlotte because like I was, it's not it's not like it's gonna stop. So I mean. Personally, my 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 only complaint, my bad for interrupting you again, but my only complaint is if I'm sick and tired of them, uh, cause it's the third time it's ever happened now. I hate the fact that it be like it just say like giving away like a women's a woman uh superstar like two champions at a time simultaneously. Like it was yeah. it was great when Becky held it, but when you had Bailey do it, then you had Sasha doing, it, now you got Oscar now like. They're doing it a little bit it's too a, much. It's a little too much, bro. And I will still say to this day, Becky obviously had the best one because obviously she had both women's champion of each brand and then held it at WrestleMania. So no, no other moment could be greater than that. Uh, you know what? You know what you made? When this conversation lead me to just think of what was the greatest tag team, women's tag team match for the titles of all time? You know what I think? Well, I think that Kyrie Sane and uh, Oscar versus uh, Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch ladder match. I think that was the greatest women's tag team match for the, you know, for the tag team title. I would say Kabuki Warriors versus uh, Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross at WrestleMania. No. I think it was very underrated. Uh, it, it's underrated. You can't even, you can't, you can't. That's all I just said. You, it's underrated. But I still think the Kabuki Warriors against Lynch and Flair was like top-notch match. It was like the best Tag team title match. Okay. Can you name one moment? Now, can you name one moment that happened in that matchup? Yeah. Besides the fact that they won the match. Yeah, when they, they almost bust Kyrie Sane head over. When and they... Becky Lynch had to kind of push her under the ring a little bit to keep her out of the action. Okay, for one thing, he actually just watched somebody video who called that out because I'm pretty no, sure. No, they did. They showed it on camera. Bruh. It was on regular camera. It wasn't obvious. But. They showed it. I wouldn't say that was the. I won't say that's the greatest match. I mean, I was also the Eliminate Chamber match was the best one. The first one was always the best one. Yeah, the Eliminate Chamber was pretty good, but it was too much of a cluster. Not really, but either way, you see that. Hey, uh, we didn't get off subject, man. Let's go to the next thing. But obviously, man, Oscar and Charlotte got the win, becoming the tag team champions. Which actually, three, four, uh, three, four of the horsewomen has won all the gold now. I get a match to see though. 
Uh, personally, I give the match a uh, I give the match a B minus, and I'll give it a C. It was actually pretty good, so it was all right. Uh, but as we move on, let's move on to the Universal Championship match. And let's see Roman Reigns, the Tribal Chief. Man, the how man? I mean, look, look. And this match had a hot star. The head of the table, our table, man. Roman Reigns, man. Look at that, man. Frost played by Kevin Owens. Man, I mean, Owens yeah. came in there full of fire. I think this one was the uh obviously I think this one would had more this this match had a lot more like uh fire to it compared to the WWE Championship match. Right. Nah, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying the WWE Championship match wasn't good. It was a well wrestled, well worked match. This one was uh hyper aggressive. I saw my outside I saw my outside of the match also, like I mean like the promos and stuff that the the build up for the match. Yeah, the build up uh, for the match was. I mean, a look bit at that man. Too. Like, you know, it, it's like man, it was because they added a little bit of comedy and all that to the WWE title match. Uh, I wouldn't say. All, I mean, I yeah, didn't you see know, what AJ Styles and the Miz doing they stuff. I didn't see nothing comedic about it. I I actually watched the match. Okay, you you. I'm talking about the stand. You know the the uh. The build up to it, you know, the night before Christmas stuff and all well, that. Well, I didn't watch that more. I didn't. I didn't watch that. I didn't. I didn't watch that stuff. See, you know, but obviously, saying? like Fox, they're more competitive. You and know? then me is cracking jokes with uh, what's called about how he gonna, um, how he gonna cash in and AJ Styles saying it's easier. You know, me is one. You know, stuff like that. But that's at the point now because right now we're talking about the Universal Champion. Hey, As we see, man, Kevin Owens breaking the man ankle right here, man. Yeah, Pimmons. He gonna Pimmonize him. By putting his ankle in the chair. But obviously, uh, Kevin Owens, man, showed a lot, man. You know, the fact that he got beat down so many times, you know, last Friday on SmackDown, man, he got beat down the entire night. And yet, you know, here he is on TLC, man. He's showing, I mean, I like the fact, man, he beat Roman Reigns down from the back, man. You know, hey, take take any cost, man. You know, win, win at any cost. Jay Uso just kept coming back in the match. Every time it seemed like Owens had it, there go Jay Uso. Yeah, and so, obviously, I was, uh, I mean, I was I was screaming for Jimmy Uso. Like uh, the moments Kevin Owens gonna like win it, I was like, man, I was hoping for like Jimmy Uso to come back finally, something like that, and then go ahead and bring all the bloodline members back together. But it didn't come through, man. It didn't come through. I think he's not. I think Jimmy Uso's not coming back until January. But I think the favorite moment was the fact that like you know uh, Roman Reigns, man, you know kept on getting beat down by oh man, you see that uh the drive drive by, by yeah. yeah. But, you know, the moments were like Roman Reigns got attacked, man. And Kevin Owens was so close. And you see Michael Cole, man, getting so hyped up. Hyped up for Kevin Owens. And then all of a sudden, like, man, he getting so mad at the fact that Jay Uso came on getting around and stuff like that. But this you know? was the worst. This was worse than the other TLC match. Whereas the logic didn't make sense. It didn't make sense as far as logic is concerned. No, wait, wait, wait. Because... But wait before you even explain it. Hold on. What he means is like real life logic, not WWE logic. That's right. different. That's a difference. Right. Like you up there and you got your hand on a belt. All you got to do is pull the belt down. And they're like about four times where he was up there with the belt, with his hand on the belt. All he had to do was just pull the belt down. And he just, you know, just there. Now that is WWE logic. Now what he's explaining is like real life logic. Like you... I mean, look, they've been doing this for years. I mean, I mean, hell, that's a lot of people who like. But they ain't never did it this many times in a match. I mean, there's been plenty of times where like. But it's true what you're saying. I mean, they've been doing it for years. I mean, I mean, think about. I still talk about how much like ladder match where someone just hang on to the title belt, man. All they could have just did took the title down, bro, for doing that, you know. But hey, like it's been like 20 years and they've been doing this stuff. So that's WWE that for you. But overall, man, I give this match the story t- and the storytelling in this matchup also, man. You know, with Kevin Owens still won't get down, even though know, Roman Reigns had the win. You know, I like the storytelling. I give this match an A. I give it an A. Sh- straight up, man. I give it an A. The Universal Championship match was just that good. You know, it was I- very aggressive. Uh, I liked it. I liked uh, the WWE title match a little better, but to it's me- like it's like one A, one B. It's like, you know, both of them are really, really good. Both of them got an A for me. Mm, this match I would have gave it. I, would, I think this match to me was a match of night. Based on storytelling, match-wise, and stuff like that, and both superstars, you know, this this was match of night to me. Obviously. But now let's go ahead and move on to the main event. There were no match of the night. To me. My match of the night was her being. Like, okay, whatever, man. 
you don't really see too many good TLC matches nowadays. Like if you if you want to see a good TLC match, you gotta watch it before TLC pay per view well, exists. Like I don't mind a good TLC match, but I just rather regular wrestling because when you start getting too many of the tables and all that kind of stuff around, I, it just turns into garbage sometimes. But one thing I did like, and I will say, neither one of these two matches turned into a big cluster. I will say that. So all four, all four men were uh, great workers in their matches. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and move on to the main event where we get to talk about Randy Orton taking on the Fiend in the fire in the first ever, as they say, Firefly Inferno match. Yeah, what a wonderful match. Uh, yeah. I was on the edge of my seat. So yeah, I was on the edge of my seat for this too because I was really surprised like how the way they got the fire set up and so I did. Uh, obviously, obviously, like, we went one or two ways on this one. Uh, you, you, I don't know who you even went for. I uh, uh, actually thought The Fiend would win since it's more of a specialty match for someone of his character. I, uh, I should have known because Kane used to always lose those things. I thought Rain Dwarf was going to win only because, for one thing, it was not going to be. I'm pretty sure if it's Firefly, you know it's going to be like, you know it was going to be like something for real. And plus, the Fiend got over uh, Randy Orton. So, but obviously, Randy Orton did get over the Fiend by uh, obviously pushing the Fiend in the, uh, the last few moments of the matchup. You know, setting the man. There was a, there was a good spot in the matchup. You know, between the Fiend and Randy Orton. Yeah, you know, it started out with nice wrestling at first. Yeah. And then, like I say, we just started getting to the outside of the ring with the fire and all that. What tripped me out was when he tried to set him up in the chair. <laughs> I, I was like, man, why did you take the man together, son? Like that's all. That's all that would take the man together, so like that, you know? You know, but hey, it was actually a pretty good Inferno match. It was alright. I mean, it was it was alright, but like it was it was actually better than like others I've seen. You know, unlike, you know, Kane versus Bray Wyatt, which was a pinfall. Yeah. Uh I ain't gonna lie, the Kane MVP one back in Armageddon in two thousand six was pretty good actually. It was okay. Uh but the this best one, one was the first one. This one actually surprised me though. This one truly surprised me. Uh between the Fiend and Randy Orton. Uh Obviously, as my as my dad says, you know, that was I think the best part was when he did try to set the man on fire in the chair, the rocking chair. I think that was the best one. Yeah, that was kind of funny. Uh but obviously the story of the matchup was that obviously like I said, Randy Orton won the match, but the story of the matchup was the fact that uh Randy Orton set the fiend on fire after the match for a second time actually. Uh so like pretty much and you could tell, you can tell what really happened, but Obviously, Randy, you know, put what gas all like uh, gasoline all over the fiend. It's like all over his body, lay his body and everything else. And also, he just man lit the match up, set the man on fire, man. Show that he's truly a legend killer. He's literally a killer, man. And I'm looking forward to see what's gonna happen on Monday Night Raw. I do like the uh that jacket he wore too. I, I'm looking forward to see what yeah. You know, it is pretty nice jacket, though. The Legend Killer had a little uh, tally marks on him. Yeah, but I'm also looking forward to, like, what's what's going to be next for Randy Orton and The Fiend. I know this is not going to be over. I know this is going to set up for uh, Roy Rumble, to be honest. Um, I mean, right, as we see right now, you know, Randy's about to hit the RKO, try to hit the RKO on The Fiend. Uh, but like I said, man, this this goes all the way back from WrestleMania 33, man, when they had Randy Orton and the Fiend feud, right? I mean, well, Bray Wyatt feuded each other, like, right back again. You know, uh, we thought that Bray Wyatt should never lost to the champion, as you said, a bunch of times. See, as you see right here, the Fiend was set on fire. Right here. Uh, but what you thought? What you think about the uh, the feud over, overall? Good feud. Like I could have like, like oh, kind of done without the fire stuff. But good for you, you know, whatever. Um, I see he got the flame retarding clothes on. Exactly, yeah. You know. I mean, I'm talking about the feud in general. Like, you know, talking about like years back ago, then they, you know, take it back down. I think, yeah, I think it's uh, long-term storytelling. Very good. They went back to those old stories that they did and stuff like that. And it seems like it's so crazy. Like with the, it's like it was that was meant for Bray Wyatt. You know they, like it makes you wonder. Like that's why Bray Wyatt lost most of these rivalries he had. You know when he was just the eater of worlds. You know, uh, having him like lose against people like Seth Rollins and 
Roman Reigns and like Finn Balor and Randy Orton, but like now you see like he come back as the Fiend and he's getting his vengeance back on all these guys who've beaten him in the past. And it's it's beyond crazy now. But I can obviously this is set up for obviously this setting up for a little bit of uh Royal Rumble rematch maybe between the Fiend and Randy Orton. So I'm looking forward to see how that go down. Uh any thoughts about what you might think that's gonna happen for towards Royal Rumble? Yeah, I think it's gonna be an um I think it's gonna be a rematch between the two at Royal Rumble. It's gonna be a regular match. Um Big E and Sammy. I think the title, the Intercontinental title is gonna change before um Royal Rumble. I think it's gonna have it go down on on one of the SmackDowns. Uh, actually, Sammy and Big E actually have a match on SmackDown for the title. So. Oh, real? This coming set Friday? A little late, man. I knew that. I was just making sure, you know, sure that you people were. knew that I knew that was going to be a match. Okay. Well, as you see right here, you see Randy Orton about to set the Fiend on fire. Uh, but, man, TLC overall was pretty good, actually. This actually surprised me. Like I said, this match, this match was, um... Uh, this was my best. This was my best one. This was my best prediction pay per view. Now you can tell that. No, no, no. We already know it's the fiend. He's gonna come back anyway. We're, we're not gonna do it to him. All right, all right. But I mean, <laughs> what do you think about it? Laugh about it now. Oh man! But like I said, man, watch out for. Uh, what do you think about TLC overall, man? TLC overall was actually a pretty good pay per view. I would give it a. Uh, B minus. Uh it has some lagging moments for me. Um, even though the Banks Carmella match was okay, that kind of lag. The women matches kind of lagged the night for me for some reason. I just wasn't really into the women, the women match. The women match surprised me actually more than you did, so. And um The women match more surprised me. Yeah. But overall it was a really uh, pretty good pay per view. Pretty good. I've seen better this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but obviously, man, go ahead and watch out for our uh, NXT War Games pay per view uh results, and also, also watch out for you know our Slammy Award predictions as we will be doing the Slammy Awards. That's our next video, so watch out for that. And watch out for New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve. I'm looking I forward mean, to hey, I can't wait for uh, Finn Balor, Kyle O'Reilly too. Uh, that sir. that's gonna be a heck of a match. I mean, if it was just as good as Pete Dunne, Cal- I mean, Cal- when you see Colorado and Pete Dunne go at it, man, I mean, these men been going at it for like this is all what the fourth time they going at it, man. I don't know, man, but like Pete Dunne, Colorado, man, killed me. And it it seemed like they turned it up about five notches on this last every one. Every single time, man, they do so well, man, together, man. And I can't wait to see another Timothy Thatcher, Tommaso Ciampa. I saw if it was just like how it was the NFC War Game, which we're gonna. Show you guys a video. Uh, I'm telling you, man, it's gonna be pretty good, man. I don't know about Damian Priest and uh, and, uh Karen Cross. Karen Cross, though. I don't know about that few. I mean, I don't know, man. I don't know about that one quite yet. But sounds interesting, but I don't know. But right now, I'll leave it to my co-host DLC L O V E M C M I K E with me. Hey, we want you. We need you. Please subscribe. Hit those likes, give us some comments, and just show us some love on Facebook and uh, Twitter, IG, you know, and just tell what you think about the show. Hey, we're going to tell y'all blessings on your holidays, coming up, happy holidays, and it's all love. Y'all have a good night, and keep it tight. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the CWR Clash of Randoms podcast with my host, I mean, <laughs> with your host. The JKD, all on my co host, the DLC LOVE, MCMIKE. Hey, I'm here. Let's go get this thing started. <laughs> right now, we're going to talk about the Slammy Wars. The Slammy Wars, obviously, an annual show that happens every year, uh, with the exception of a couple of years since the draft happened. But we're going to talk about the Slammy Wars this year as the only ones you get to vote for. Well, actually, the vote is already closed already. It was closed on Friday. As we're gonna talk about each, we're gonna talk about each category. As we talk about superstar of the year, match of the year, rivalry of the year, tag team of the year, return of the year, ring gear of the year, breakout star of the year, female superstar of the year, male star of the year, and moment of the year. So, Are you ready to get started, man? Yeah. So let's start with the moment of the year. I thought this was just gonna go superstar of the year. No, like, super, just say superstar of the year for last. That's way too much. Just 
What's wrong? Just go down the list, man. Come I'm on, gonna man. say superstar of the year for last. Cause that's the big thing, bro. That man. So, so right now, I'm actually. What are you watching? Why? What are you looking at from? The moment of the year. I'm talking. What are you looking at from? What website? WWE.com. Okay, so we're gonna scroll down and scroll all the way up just to look at like when we could just. When we just scroll down too, like. Can we go ahead? Yeah. That. See, I got another engagement to go to. Yeah, which we could have started with Superstar of the Year to make it more quicker, bro. Look, let's go ahead and do Moment of the Year then. All right. Damn, okay, Moment of the Year. The Undertaker's final farewell. Drew McIntyre defeats Brock Lesnar for the champion. Oh, man. Becky Lynch announced her pregnancy. Edge returns in men's Royal Rumble match. The New Day's farewell address. Roman Reigns and Paul Hammond unite. Bailey betrays on Sasha, and the New Day gets drafted to different brands, which. Oh. Now, nah, this is a hard one. Not really. To. Uh, well, it didn't surprise me that McIntyre was going to beat Brock, so that wasn't a big one. Undertaker's farewell wasn't a big one to me. Edge returning. We all knew that he was returning, so that wasn't a big one. New Day stuff. So, so wait a minute, wait a minute. So, now you're saying all this stuff being not big. So, what would you consider – I moment think of the, year. the moment of the year for me, that kind of made me like, oh, shit. Or maybe like, oh, it's between Becky Lynch announcing her pregnancy or Bailey betrays Sasha Banks. I know you did not just say that. Even though we knew it was coming, we didn't know it was coming at th- this particular time. You just didn't know it was coming at this particular time. So... Edge returned to the Royal Rumble. So, my moment. moment of the year is Becky Lynch announced her pregnancy. Okay. Well, when you say moment of the year, it's not supposed to be, oh, what surprised you the moment of the year? That's not the part of it. It's a moment of the year. Like, what was the biggest moment to everybody in the world? And right, obviously, was, nothing. That was a big moment to me because not, it, the okay, child, hey, 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 child you, was coming. Hold on. You got to say what you got to say. You said what y'all had to say. I didn't, I didn't say why. Well, guess what? I, can, I mean, it's pretty obvious why. But, uh, Obviously, Edge was the big was the moment of the year. I mean, it's not supposed yeah, to. Crazy. It's not supposed to be like what surprised you moment of the year. It's it's the moment, the moment of the year. Obviously, and Edge it was the moment in general, man. I mean, it surprised everybody. I mean, everybody, man. That was the biggest pop, man. You heard at the Rumble, man. And obviously, man, Edge returning to the Rumble was the best moment. But let's go ahead and talk about a new uh, the next category. We talk about male superstar of the year, which has Drew McIntyre. Roman Reigns, Randy Orton, Braun Strowman, and The Fiend, Bray Wyatt. Now, uh, starting with me, you know, for me, uh, my criteria of what makes you so to be voted, get voted for me, you know, I consider that, you know, maybe you got to be there most of the year and stuff like that. And I know he's going to have an argument about it, but, you know, I know a lot of people talk about Roman being a superstar of the year, but really I, I can't say the same, man. I, I really consider Drew McIntyre having the, uh, being the male superstar of the year. You know, he was superstar half the year, and you know, he superstar the, uh, the entire year. You know, winning the Rumble, you know, dominating against Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania, man, taking on multiple challenges for his WWE Championship. You know, even though he lost it, he regained it. Like, what, two weeks later or something like that, man? And then yeah. went on a, a good battle against Roman Reigns, man, and end the year off as a WWE Champion. Drew McIntyre is my male superstar of the year. Well, Randy Orton lasts almost to the end of the Royal Rumble. Um, he fought diligently, turned on edge, fought diligently at WrestleMania. He was in the greatest wrestling match ever. Um, had great feuds during the year. He won the world title. With all that being said, Drew McIntyre superstar of the year, male superstar of the year. I still say Drew McIntyre because he just done – Everything that my partner said right here. I mean, like, he was up on his game. All right. And next we're talking about female superstar of the year. We got the current Raw Women's Champion, Oscar, SmackDown Women's Champion, Sasha Banks, Bailey, Becky Lynch, and Charlotte Flair. Now, to uh, talk about well, all these women. Now, obviously, Becky will not consider for me. She does not fit in my criteria. Right, right. Charlotte also doesn't fit in my criteria considering she missed off some time. Right, and then another thing, Charlotte had got to the point where she had go-away heat this year. 
when she was there, it was to the point where people were like, "Will you please get her off my television set?" That's not how I feel, but yes, uh, yes, it was. That's most not most wrestling that's not credits were like she she got to go. That may be not how you felt, but most wrestling credits and wrestling fans were like, "Will she please go somewhere?" Okay, so can I finish who I was gonna vote for? Thank you very much, uh, Oscar. Oscar had a successful show. Uh, she kind of slumped off in the beginning, obviously. And, you know, as tag team champ, she kind of lost everything. You know, lost her Roman title match. And then she, you know, lost the tag team title also at WrestleMania. And she f- she came right back up as Raw Women's Champion, even though she was handed the title. And she did pretty good with it. Her best rivalry was with the Golden Road Models until she slumped off a little bit when she just, she defended against, you know, uh, someone like Zelina Vega. And then they just slipped off. Her title range just slipped off a little bit. So now it leads to Sasha and Bayley. Now, Bailey was pretty good. You know, she was pretty much smacked on women's champion throughout the most of the year. She was pretty good, but when she lost the title, man, she just, it was like, okay, like, all she's going to do is go against, like, she's not going to do nothing pretty much. That's what most people thought. But, you know, now she's she's just going against, like, future stars who's going to happen. Oh, be champion, like, the next year or two years from now, maybe. And I believe, I think Sasha, and with Lita the shots, I mean, Sasha, she's always been, like, Bailey's background buddy. But overall, she won the Women's Tag Team Champion. She won the Raw Women's Champion. Then she won the SmackDown Women's Champion all in one year. And I believe my female superstar of the year will be none other than the current SmackDown Women's Champion, Sasha Banks. Well, no my, uh, my champion, my uh, uh, female superstar of the year, she started the year off as champion, going all the way through last year. And she held it almost all the way through this year, dang near. Um, she held the... Um, tag titles she was the reason why sasha banks won had one of her world title reigns this year uh she was the main reason why she had it uh bailey bailey has been the most consistent wrestler female wrestler this year she's been the most consistent i mean like you know ding dong hello i mean you can't see greatness win Okay. You can't see the greatness of someone when they come up. But let's go ahead with the breaks, the breakout star of the year. Now we have Dominic Mysterio, Bianca Belair, Otis, Street Profits, and Murphy. I'm not going to say Murphy because Murphy has been on the roster. I'm not going to say Street Profits because they've been on the roster. Otis, same thing. So that leaves Bianca Belair and Dominic Mysterio. Okay, one. Bianca Belair barely was you, so she does not count for Can me. Can I get through what I was getting ready to say? Not, well, for one thing, you interrupted me. All right, now, so. Bianca Belair, she came to the main roster, but she was barely even you. That was, I was the point I was getting ready to make. She was barely even used on the Raw brand. They just started using her a little bit on SmackDown. So that leaves you only with one choice. And I don't like it. But it's a, it's a legitimate choice. Uh, I think the breakout star of the year is Dominic Mysterio. Mm. I think he, he he's uh, even though he's been put in situations as well over his head, he's handled those situations pretty well. Um, he's put together some pretty decent matches. Uh, he took a r- pretty good beating at uh, one with those sticks at one time. So number bro spec. You know, so I'm going to say Dominic Mysterio, breakout star. Well, to be want to be a breakout star, you know, you got to be very relevant relevant over the year. Uh, obviously, Bianca Belair doesn't fit in my criteria. That's what I'm saying. Considering that, uh, well, for one thing, one, Mr. Kevin Owens actually was the reason why she was used on Raw that one year. And let alone that Dominic Mysterio was just starting. And what is Dominic Mysterio doing right now currently still? Exactly. So, what would make him a breakout if he hasn't done nothing on SmackDown? So was just well, none of these guys have really done a lot, honestly. Same. Even Street Profits didn't begin the year doing a lot. Can I finish? My, thank you, sir. Uh, Murphy. Murphy fits in, actually, because, you know, he started the year off, man, learning from Seth Rollins. He's done pretty well. And, you know, he's been consistently in, the, like, one of the longest rivalries in WWE history. And, well, you uh, consistently lose. Can't finish what I'm saying, bro. Like I'm just trying to criticize if each person, man. Relax, man. All right. Uh, Murphy, but I don't see Murphy being there also because, like, it's like this year, 
he went from could be a future star to like somewhat or may not even be a future star now he's back on SmackDown. Otis. He's a great man. I think they should never broke him up with his tag team. It was dumb. I don't know what the hell you would think of Vince. He was, that was just dumb. And then having win Mr. Money in the Bank, and then you knew you weren't going to do nothing with him after the fact he won the briefcase. Right. You're right about that. So, I'm so, my lead, my last point, Street Profits. Now, to make, to your point, you do say Street Profits was part of the brand. Okay. So, you have to be in the brand for at least longer, longer than a year. Like, at least last year, he'll be the brand for, like, a year last year to, like, not consider be a breakout, which is why Street Profits considered as one. Street Profits started off, and that's why they considered as a breakout start, because, like, they weren't used that much, and yet here they come around February being Boy. used, becoming. I take it back. They were used for joke stuff, you know, that behind-the-scenes joke stuff, and then they started having a little match with the Viking Raiders, and then it was, like, joke stuff with the Viking Raiders. Uh, but they they dethroned Seth Rollins, who was a future world champion. Well, not future world champion, but a former world champion and all that stuff. Dethroned Murphy, who was former tag team champ. You know, became the longest reigning Raw tag team champion, let alone won the Smack. Well, really, they were switched. They were switched with the SmackDown tag team titles, making them the second tag team to ever hold all three NXT Raw and SmackDown tag team title gold. So therefore, really, my only breakout stars of the year were the Street Profits. They've done so well in their matches and stuff like that. Look, and you can't blame the Street Profits. You can't you can't argue against me because guess what? You can't blame me for the reason I'm picking though. Cause guess what? You know you can blame to management. You can go blame management if you got a problem with my pick. Well, because if you got a problem with my pick, you can go to management by well, booking I'm them. Go call them. I'll tell you what though, if I hadn't picked Dominic Mysterio, honestly, I would have actually picked Otis. That's a surprise considering you don't even like Otis being like I don't like Otis too much, but I, I would have picked him. All right, ring gear of the year, and then you take over first from the, on the next one. Ring gear of the year, we have Charlotte Flair, which she does have a lot of creative stuff. Sasha Banks definitely have a lot of creative stuff. Seth Rollins. Can, can we just go to name people? Um, uh, New Day, man, you can't get more creative than the New Day. Oh. New Day almost. Bianca Belair, Shinsuke Nakamura, and uh, Carmella. It's a two. It, it, it's close. Two way tie here. It's not really for me. New uh, Day or either Bianca Belair. So let's cut them off. Carmella, so, let's just go ahead and cut uh, Carmella Shinsuke off. Yeah, Carmella, Carmella Shinsuke off. Uh, Carmella, for one thing, what? First of all, Carmella wasn't even here for the most of the year. Okay, if right. You, if you're talking about just wearing that latex red, it's creative, then whatever, man. Uh, Shinsuke, I mean, he has some pretty nice attires, but it's just kind of bland with the whole red and black. Yeah. And, I get, and I get the reason why, because, you know, Japan. Uh, but we can go ahead and cut them off quickly. Charlotte Flair. Uh, she's my third person to cut off because, you know, it's like she wear the same pattern attire, you know. She wear a different color, but like you she said, like same pattern. She wear yeah. the same color, yeah, but like she just had the same pattern. Now, Seth Rollins, his stuff be like for special occasions. Yeah, but. He don't do it on every episode. It's like for special stuff. Yeah, I mean, I do like the fact he recreated the Halloween Havoc Raven stereotype back at SummerSlam. Right. I mean, some of them were kind of bland because it's just a copycat color. I mean, copycat attire just different colors, like. You know, the same black, all black and silver attire. And he does that cosplay, too, sometimes. Yeah. So, really, that leaves Rollins out. So, really, my only three are Sasha Banks, New Day, and Bianca Belair. Now, for me, Sasha comes in third. You know, it's, Sasha has no good colors. You know, she should, her thing is color, but she don't put no design to it. That's the thing. It's the same thing with Charlotte. But, like, she be having pretty colored attires, though. We're leading to Bianca Belair and New Day. Now, Bianca Belair, she makes her own attires, you know. Man, I think she has one of the great – I think she has the best female. Right. Out of the female, she has the best attire. But it's just not up there with the New Day because New Day has – New Day, we have some stuff, though. New Day had the most creative ones. I mean, look, they had the all-white – they had the coloring book attire on, man. Like, if you didn't know, like, the beginning of the year when it had the all-white on, man, they had the color book attire on, man. For Xavier Woods, it's like, they didn't, like – I mean, they had the freshest gear, man. I just like it, man. And I like the gear they got on currently right now, you know, the – the blue and yellow, I just, the teal blue and yellow, I like that. So, really, New Day got ring gear. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say uh, it's close. Bianca barely, barely touching them, barely walking up on them, but it, it's still New Day. New Day still got the best ring gear out of everybody. Yeah. All uh, right, you take it over, son. Return of the year. Now, obviously, we got five men who return. We have none other than the rated R superstar, Edge, the current Universal Champion, Roman Reigns, 
No, no, the uh, the Hurt Business, the uh, VP of the Hurt Business, MVP. We have, oh, man, we have your favorite superstar of WCWA, man, Goldberg. Oh. And then we got the champion of the people. We got the great liberator, the current Intercontinental Champion, and two-time Slammy Award, Sammy Award winner, Sammy Zayn. Now, let, I'm going to go ahead and cut off Sammy Zayn. Sammy was not that great. Yeah, no his said. comeback wasn't great. No, no. said. I, it was cool the fact he came back out of nowhere at the Intercontinental Championship win by uh from Jeff Hardy, but it wasn't that great. No said. MVP, it was angle like it was a it was a good shock value though. It was a good shock value. Royal Rumble to see him coming back, but man, his return looked so weak when he went when he went toe to toe with Brock Lesnar, and so like that. So yeah. no offense to him. Then he lost to Rey Mysterio. I mean, he just started getting real popular when he started coming up with the hurt. Yeah, then got beat down by Edge and started that man. Like, yeah. just crazy. Goldberg, for one thing, what return did he even yeah. have? They announced uh, they announced him coming. So what, what was, that's not even a return at I'm all. I'm so sick of Goldberg. Goldberg wasn't in return at all. They announced right. he was coming anyway. So that's no said. Roman Reigns and Edge was up there. Roman now I think Roman Reigns would have been just as big as Edge if they had a crowd. But Roman Reigns, man, he, his return was so dominant, man. He came out of nowhere, spear the Fiend, and beat down Braun Strowman. It was pretty good. That's like Edge. Nova said he was my return of the year. It was so much shock value. Then uh, you know, a what nine years? Uh, nine years since he, you know, retired, man. It's just out of nowhere. It was out of nowhere. Even though you said that we expected it, but I, I yeah, it's, it was expected. My return of the year was Roman Reigns. He came back with a new character. Came back more forceful. Came back. Being even more than what we thought he was gonna be, I mean, like, it, you could never fathom that he was gonna be this way when he came back. I mean, whole different character change, you know. So I'm going with uh, Roman Reigns. Mm. All right, you got the tag let's, team, brother. Let's go ahead and talk about tag team of the year. Now we did female star of the year. We did uh, we did male superstar of the year. Now we're doing tag team of the year. As we go ahead and cap off with Golden Role Models, who've won the Raw Tag Team titles, the SmackDown Tag Team title, and the Tag Team Champions together. Nia Jax and Shannon Baszler, who's won the NEC Tag Team, I mean, NEC, I mean, so the Women's Tag Team titles, off of the Golden Role Models. The New Day, who at this time have been the SmackDown Tag Team Champions like two times, and also was the Raw Tag Team Champions. Yeah. Along with the Street Profits, who became the longest reigning Raw Tag Team Champions, and was also currently... Still the SmackDown Tag Team Champions. And Shinsuke and Cesaro uh, were well, pretty much the SmackDown Tag Team Champions for a short amount of time. And I thought you might be pretty disappointed because of the fact that the Hurt Business was not considered for this one. Well, the only reason why the Hurt Business wasn't on here, I understand why, because they didn't win any gold this year until today. So I can kind of understand the reason why they weren't on here. Uh, I can guess go here and start eliminating now. Shinsuke and Cesaro, I understand why, because they had – I mean, short reign. No, 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 I mean, no explanation for that one, man. It's just. Uh, Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler, they haven't been doing nothing with the titles anyway. All right, so that leaves with legitimate tag teams now. So. So the three legitimate tag teams are the Golden Road Models, New Day, and, and Street Profits. Uh, I give Street Profits a lot of credit, but a lot of their matches were against the same folks over and over and over again. And. They, a lot of their matches were joke matches. You know, they had that big, long joke rivalry, which I didn't think, you know, was becoming of a champion. New Day fought more competitive matches on SmackDown, which I would get, make them, give them the edge over Street Profits. But my tag team of the year is the Golden Road Models. They were doing some of every goddamn thing. I mean, they were dominating all the women. They did defend the title uh, against a more gruesome women. They um, not only uh, defended the tag titles, they won, you know, world title gold, both of them. So, I mean, you couldn't get no better than what the Golden Road Models were doing this year. So, the Golden Road Models are my tag team of the year. Uh, as for me, obviously, top three was the same way. Uh, I was going to go ahead and look at the New Day. Now, I'm not going to lie. I feel bad for the New Day back in 2015 that they didn't get super, they didn't get Tag Team of the Year. They got robbed by the Usos because the Usos were actually, two of them were 
one of them were gone anyway for most of the year, and they still got tag team of the year. But that time has passed to be tag team of the year, you know. Uh, I think that time has passed, you know, a tag team of the year. And then plus, like, the entire New Day wasn't even there anyway for most of the year. It always been one member gone out of nowhere. Uh, it leads to the golden role model of Street Powers for me. Now, unlike their individual success with Bailey becoming the SmackDown Women's Champion on her own, and the longest reigning on her own, somewhat. And with Sasha, as you like to point out and say that she can enroll in champion because of Bayley. Uh, as far as, um, so really, their only tag team success, technically, if you want to be, for, like, if you want to be technical, their only tag team success, we're constantly just a tag team champion. And, you know, another thing is that all you kept on doing was dumb, double teaming. You know, as you say, you dominate the roster. Uh, but when it came to the summertime, they did constantly go against the same amount of people also. And so like that. As they well, they did. Hold on, wait, hold on, hold on, wait, hold on. They constantly kept on going against Oscar over the summer, which was which is why I said I think that actually made Oscar more of a better wrestler and made her reign a little bit more legit. Uh, both of them constantly kept on going against uh, Oscar, along with Kyrie saying until she had left. And then all of a sudden, they ended the rivalry – we don't want to say nothing about that Tamina rivalry. They ended their t- I don't know what you want to consider. I didn't even want to bother mention that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, offense. no. Tamina's a good wrestler. I believe Tamina's pretty Are good. Are you crazy? A good wrestler. I think she should. They should at least push. Whatever, man. That's not the purpose. We're talking about a golden role model. And then all of a sudden, they end the whole Oscar thing. And they still constantly get on going against Oscar. I mean, look, Clash of Champions for the SmackDown Women's Champion. It was Oscar all over again. And all of a sudden, they fought each other at Hell in a Cell. So, really, the only tag team success was also the same as Street Profits, as you like to point out. It was constantly going against this. And then they weren't pushing anything anybody else on the women's division also. So, really, they were pretty much going through the same phase as Street Profits, though. Uh, Street Profits, man, you know, they and you know, look, they got good promo skills. You know, man, they got good segments. I mean, some of them were bad, was bad to my co-host at least. But overall, man, Street Profits showed why they could be one of the greatest tag teams in the future. Becoming the longest reigning Raw tag team champion, not currently SmackDown tag team champion. That's why I consider Street Profits tag team of the year. No explanation needed, bro. Well, actually, I heard it. Did we agree on any of these things yet? Well, we did agree to ring gear of the year, so. All right. Well, rivalry of the year. This is where I take over. Rivalry of the year. We have the Rollins versus Mysterio family. Drew McIntyre versus Randy Orton. Edge versus Randy Orton, Sasha Banks versus Bailey, R Truth versus the World, mm. Lana versus the uh, announce tables. I'm d- definitely dropping two off the list right now. The Atlanta stuff is a joke. Get rid of that off the list. R Truth stuff is a joke. Get that off the list. Uh, Sasha Banks and Bailey was a very, very uh, heated rivalry. Uh, I like the rivalry. I wish it had it happened on a bigger stage, uh, but maybe it'll come later on. Seth Rollins and Mysterio family, that lasts way, 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 way too long. That was actually too long of a rivalry. So we're down to two rivalries, um, both of them featuring Randy Orton. And I would have to pick um, Edge versus Randy Orton, even though it didn't last long. But it was supposed to be in one more match between the two, and I really believe – the Edge ran the Orton uh, feud had a lot of fire and a lot of personal, uh, a lot of personal stuff in it, and so that what really made it good. Um, Edge like them going back to the day. I mean, like heat because you can. Uh, I even remember when Edge and Randy Orton was feuding over the uh, Intercontinental Title from when they were younger. So it's almost like one of those long term rivalry things that we talked about earlier where it started way back when they were young all the way to now. And so I think Edge Randy Orton was the uh, rivalry of the year. Uh, rivalry of the year. Uh, Sasha versus Bailey. It just – Sasha and ba- – okay, obviously we cut out the two. I'm going to cut out two more. I am going to cut out Sasha versus Bailey. Only because it was just short, which I believe they was going to wait say to WrestleMania time to do that. But I'm also gonna cut his pick. Actually, I'm gonna cut off his pick, Edge and Randy Orton, because they didn't finish it. And and, and I'm not trying to hold it against Edge, but uh, he's not gonna agree with my pick. But really, despite the fact how long 
It was. And despite the fact that we both were complaining about it, I actually considered Rollins and the Mysterio family as rival of the year. Oh, no. McIntyre and Randy Orton could have been so great, man. And they just stopped all that, like, injury nonsense, saying, like, having yeah, they the, were doing the three punts to the head, the three Claymore kicks to the head, all, like, and then getting folks uh, hyped, hyped up for, like, someone like Keith Lee to get a Dudley title shot instead. Like, Seth Rollins versus the Mysterio family, despite the fact how long it was, it, it created some, it generated a little bit of more, it generated a little bit of buzz. Because, like, you know, the constant, uh, different, they did have different matches. Uh, and it, it was a little bit of disappointment to the Rivers, you know, because a lot, a lot of people have been having hopes for Dominic Mysterio to get a win over Rollins, but really it never happened, to be honest. Dominic never got a win over uh, Rollins, I don't believe. And the constant, like, even they had different matches for it. The Steel Cage match, then you had a uh, no disqualification match, tag team match. Shoot, I mean, you had all sorts of matches for this rivalry, even though despite the fact it was so long. But that's why Rollins and the Mysterio fan was my rivalry. And then, like, it was a lot of turncoats and stuff like that, so that's why I consider my rivalry of the year. As we're going to take a look to match of the year, as we talk about Undertaker versus AJ Styles and WrestleMania 36 in a Boneyard match. New Day versus The Hurt Biz on a November 16th edition of Raw for the Raw Tag Team titles. Ed versus Randy Orton as the, uh, the greatest WrestleMania, uh, greatest WrestleMania, the greatest wrestling match ever at Deadly Backlash. We got the men's Royal Rumble matchup in 2020. We got AJ Styles versus Daniel Bryan in the Intercontinental Championship match. Roman Reigns versus Jey Uso in the I Quit Hell in a Cell match for the Universal Champion. Sasha Banks versus Bayley for the SmackDown Women's Champion at Hell in a Cell. AJ Styles versus Sami Zayn versus Jeff Hardy in a Triple Threat Intercontinental Title match, ladder match. Uh, Drew versus Roman Reigns in Survivor Series. And Becky Lynch versus Asuka at Royal Rumble tw- 2020. Oh, man. I'm going to cut out Becky Lynch versus Asuka as my first one, only because the ending was just a little bit wrong. The fact that you had Asuka to use the Miz, and then Becky Lynch kicked her in the gut to where she spits the fit Miz in the yeah, air. Yeah, in her own face, yeah. I am gonna. My next match to cut off is the men's Royal Rumble match because I did not like the fact they had Brock Lesnar dominate the first thirteen people. Actually, I didn't match. mind it. I actually did mind it, but uh, Cause it made it, it made it better when he got put out. Uh, yeah, but still, uh, I can't really consider a Royal Rumble match to be the great. I can't consider a match like this. But I understand great. what you're saying, yo. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of hype too because you know all these folks returning like. You know, MVP, then, uh, and, you know, MVP, then having Edge coming back. Like, it was great and all, but it's just not there. Bro, well, right along with you, I I, I like, don't get me wrong, I like the Boneyard match. I thought it was the best cinem- cinematic match they had, but I would knock it off because it's a cinematic match. You know, I'm a wrestling purist, so I don't count cinematic matches as real matches. So I can't count it as a match of the year. Uh. So, so far, it leads us to New Day versus the Hurt Business. Uh, also leads us to Edge, Randy Orton, uh, AJ Styles, Daniel Bryan, Roman versus the Us- Uso. Too Sasha much talking. Bayley. I got to get rid of Roman Reigns and Jay Uso. Too much talking. Okay. Then leads AJ, Sambi, and Jill. Uh, Ooh, and that was a good match. Okay, so I want to cut off. I'm going to cut off the uh, – I'm going to call Sasha versus Bailey also. It wasn't the best. It wasn't the finest as we expected. Right. They've done better. So, I'm going to have to cut it off, too. They've done better. Like, it just wasn't that that, that takeover caliber they had, you know? Right. Uh, You know, next match. I agree. Uh, Next match I want to cut off. Obviously, I'm going to cut off the Ed versus Randy Orton match. Ooh, we man. The greatest match ever. It wasn't the greatest match ever. It wasn't the greatest match ever, but it was a really, really good match. I mean, that was a really good match, man. Too much, like... Okay, well, and, and I'm going to go off what you say, uh, as you like to talk about NXT so much. Too much, uh, as you like, too much resilience, for one thing. Uh, and, you know, constantly using other people's moves, pedigree, rock bottom, and all that stuff. That's too that, much, that was a good match, though. Too much resilience to it. Uh, I'm also going to cut off New Day versus Hurt Business. Oh, come on, man. Well, I'm going to tell man. I'm going to be really honest. I'm going to cut off that. Uh, okay, despite the fact for one thing, like, all right. Well, you're right. We can't have all of them, so. I mean, right. look, don't get me wrong. And then for one thing, they had to restart the match, too. Like, it was, that was all right, but, like. This ain't the one they restarted way, no, the match, though. The one. But either way, like, just seeing, like, it was. Renew and Herbins were really good, but 
I think this the first time they wrestled each other. Yes, it was. Uh, but it just wasn't there. It wasn't just there like it was like tonight, on uh, uh, TLC or the other one when they did the rematch. Actually, it just wasn't there. So that leaves us with AJ Styles, Daniel Bryan, A Styles, Sami Zayn, and Jeff Hardy, and Drew versus Roman. Which my next match I am gonna cut off is the ladder match for Man, the Intercontinental Champion. That Drew versus Roman was good. Now. I'm going to cut off the Intercontinental Championship ladder match. It was it was a really good Intercontinental Championship match. Don't get me wrong. AJ Styles, Sami Zayn, Jeff Hardy put their heart out in that matchup. Great brilliance by Sami Zayn in that matchup also. But, you know, when I look at these other two matches, it was like pure wrestling, man. Like, especially like the Intercontinental match between AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan. Yeah. And then when I saw Drew and Roman, it was a monster, like a monster bound match. Like, these were like hard hitting each other. You know, man, McIntyre hitting up the, the chops, man, the stiff punches and everything. Roman hitting up the hitting up moves that like he wouldn't really normally use, like the guillotine and all that stuff, man. And that's why that was be my top two. And as much as I like to say, it, really, AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan's actually my match of the year, only because at the end of Survivor Series, Jay Uso did came up, came up to help Roman win, along with Roman hitting the, uh, you know, obviously hitting up the uh, low blow. But man, Styles and Daniel Bryan. It was a hard-hitting technical bout, man, between the two. And in the end, AJ Styles won cleanly to uh, win the championship that the one single title he never gained yet, and that was the Intercontinental title. I, um. That's my match of the year right there. I honestly don't even know what to pick. This is the first one that I've been just really stumped on because I really liked the first time New Day wrestled the Hurt Business. That was a really, really good match. I remember I gave that match an A that night right on the spot. Uh, AJ Styles, oh, Daniel terrible. Bryan, I gave that an A plus right on the spot that night. Um, Styles and Sammy, Jeff Hardy, the Intercontinental uh, Triple Threat. Oh, I'm gonna go along with you though. Wrestling purists, AJ Styles, Daniel Bryan, that was a great match on SmackDown. They gave it away on regular TV, which made it even better, man. I mean, like superb match. I can't, I can't hate on it. And last but not least, Superstar of the Year. This is between men and women overall. Drew McIntyre, Roman Reigns, Randy Orton, Braun Strowman, Fiend, Bray Wyatt, Oscar, Sasha Banks, Bailey, Becky, and Charlotte Flair. Now, we're if, gonna we can easily make this one quick because we both said, well, if Becky had been around, she probably would have been Superstar of the Year. No, she was Superstar of the Year last year. No. But she probably would have been again because Becky, man, her character is so popular, man. But you know, so her character probably would have went. You brought you right. Her character probably would have went down this year. It's probably g good that she went away for a while. You probably right. Cause it's good that Charlotte went away for a while. We're gonna go ahead and cut this short because for one thing, we're gonna cut this short to our own picks. Uh, well, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, just throw mine out there real quick. Yeah, cause we already said we we both voted for Drew for male. And I'm, then, I'm going with Drew for superstar of the year yeah. overall. Yeah, it's no said. We're, we're gonna go with Drew. Like, I was going to cut it short to, like, our picks, Drew, Sasha, and Bailey. But, you know, Bailey did pretty good at, like, being most of the time that women's Congratulations to her. Right. I, like I said, I only voted for Sasha, only for the female, because she's won three championships in one year, tag team, Raw, SmackDown, a women's champion, just like that. But Drew has been the man, really. See, but for the women, I voted Bailey because she's been the most consistent the whole year. Even though Sasha did matches that Bailey. Like, told her, like, I, I, I can't even say convinced. Like, she didn't convince her to do the match. She but just she put, did. She, put she her was out more there. consistent. I just put her out she there. She had more consistent wins. She lost less than Sasha Banks. That, oh, well, that is you awesome. know, stuff like that. I mean, she held a title longer than Sasha Banks' uh, reign. Hey, but, I mean, just like Booker T said, man, hey, what's better? Hey, besides wins, what's better than that? Championships, man. Guess what? It can't, it can't be no like Sasha Banks, man. She got wins and championships, man. Three championships over two. But, you know, hey, you know, Bailey, you know, she can't hold that mother forever. No matter what. She dang near had it forever, but she can't hold it forever. But no matter what, Drew McIntyre is our superstar of the year. Yeah, overall, Drew. Though. I mean, holding WWE champion most of the year, man, and still is. Two-time WWE champion now. I don't know. It was a time where somebody in Cleveland, Mississippi was named Drew McIntyre when they was a little kid, and the substitute teacher asked them what their name was. And they said Drew McIntyre and got in trouble at school. I wonder who that was. Yeah. 
uh, you know, I heard that same story, and what happened was that it's the end. It's called the name is the end because this is the end of this episode. <laughs> as you will, as you guys will share, uh, share this video, uh, please leave a like, subscribe, and comment down below. So this guy over here can desperately leave, so leave his own child just for to make something, something for other people. Because apparently, his customers are more just as important as this show is. Just as important. As, uh, no, it's not just as important, people. As you guys will leave a like, share, subscribe, and comment down below. Man, what do you think? Who do you think should win all these categories? You know, I'm all about that Street Profits, Drew McIntyre, man, Sasha Banks, all of them, bro. And I will leave you. Just like Kim Mega Saban, I'll leave you with a good night and a goodbye as I am the JKD with my co host, the, the DOC, L O V E, Dr. Love, M C M I K E. Hey, and leave a, uh, leave a comment. Do you want to start doing our, uh, doing our show in video form next year? Just think about it. Do you want that? Hey, let's let us know. Happy holidays to everyone. Uh, Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. And keep it tight. All right. Yep, yep.